So I have here on this bed the old floor. This is the metal flange that would have connected the old bed floor frame to the side panels. It's spot welded and there's no real pattern. It's just a, a random spot weld every inch or two inches. Obviously done manually by a person. So I'm coming through and I'm drilling it and I'm going to pull this off. You know, I could just put some pour 15 or some coating over top of it, but it's still going to hold dirt and moisture between the two pieces and I'd rather have it out of there and completely discourage any type of um, deterioration of the metal, any type of rotting. This is a product called Rust Enemy. It's a rust converter. There are many of them available on the market. And all I'm going to do is just spray this on, and it's going to turn that rust a black color. We'll get a little bit of white powdery residue, and then we can come through with our next step after that. This is just a degreaser mixed with a little bit of dish soap. Gone dish soap, which is also very good at degreasing. I've got my pour 15 now and what I'm doing is I'm just getting a nice heavy amount of that on the end of my nylon brush synthetic brush here and I'm really brushing it up in this corner I'm laying it in there very very heavy with the hope that it runs behind this angle iron and coats in between these two layers now I'm doing multiple applications in order to encourage that so my thought here is basically everything from this wood floor down, I want to preserve and protect everything from the wood floor up and everything that you can see, I'm trying to preserve the original patina of the truck. I turned the propane off, but I'm going to leave the heat lamp under there. The shop door is 48. The roof is 49. And the surface of the tent is 57. So that should, that should help that stuff kick off. Surface of the metal is 72, 75, 65. So yeah, that, that should help that paint dry tonight. Okay, it's the next day now. This Pour 15 is very nice and hardened. But it's got that gloss on it. And in order to do our next process, we need to take that gloss off. And actually, my next process is going to be adding seam sealer on this top corner. I'll be leaving the bottom open so that stuff can drain. But I'm going to add a nice bead of seam sealer across the top in order to do that we're gonna scuff the gloss off of this and for that process I have this handle here that's for holding Scotch-Brite pad and I've got a two, a two different styles of Scotch-Brite pad I prefer the reds but I've got this stiffer one I'm gonna see how that works Now this is a product made by Transstar. It's an Ultraflex seam sealer, code number 4167. It's a rapid set, paintable within five hours, so you do have to work fairly quickly and efficiently. What I like to do is run a bead with this, and then I'll take my caulking tool, 
rub a little bit of solvent on the end of my caulking tool and I'll tool this over into that corner and give it a really nice contour as well as kind of force it down into this gap. These caulking tools are really worth their weight in gold. And as far as solvent, I've got a little bit of acetone on this rag and I just wipe my caulking tool across the acetone and then I'll run it right over top of that seam sealer. And my thought here is I just, I basically want to keep dirt and organic matter and water from sifting down between these two panels from the top. You know, if a little bit gets up through the bottom, that's okay. As long as you leave that bottom open where it can work its way back out. And with gravity on our side, all of that stuff will eventually work its way out. Now if you watch any of the spray videos that I've put out, you know that the, uh, the mix I like to use is a 431 with Japan Dryer, and that's exactly what this is. Four parts paint, three parts reducer, one part catalyst, two capfuls of pan Japan Dryer. We've got a beautiful day today, and we're going to spray this down with a coat of red oxide primer. some of the truck armor here, cheap bed liner, and I'm just going for these inner fenders here. The goal is just a little bit of extra chip guard. I've been pretty happy with this product. I know it's just the cheap Harbor, Harbor Freight version, but uh, it's impressed me. I've used it on the cab of the truck and I've actually used it on a couple of aluminum boats that leaked and it's, it's solved that problem also. All right, two coats per side of that bed armor rolled on, and the intention of that, like I mentioned, is just a little bit of uh, rock chip protection and a little bit of, of corrosion resistance, I guess. And also, when I bolt these fenders onto the side of this bed, I'm not planning on using any welting, and I think that this extra layer of, of rock chip protection of the bed liner will kind of act in the same way that that welting would have. All right, I've got here the new struts. The old ones I was using were 70 pound. These are 120. They're the heaviest ones I could find. Same dimensions, but just with 120 pounds of compression required. And uh, I put a little tiny bit of marine grease in each end. And marine grease is, is nasty stuff, man. It's made to not move underneath the water. So it should be good in this situation, too. You can really see how that seam sealer just laid in there perfectly. Imagine if you had to weld that whole thing and then try to smooth it over nice. I'm telling you that seam sealer is such a lifesaver. You know the other thing too, I, it seems like I see it occasionally, uh, is guys wanting to use just regular silicone or regular caulking from, you know, from the store, from Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace or whatever. Which is good if you're on a you know shoestring budget and you want to get your your vehicle sealed up. But one thing to definitely keep in mind with that option is the fact that some of those they might have silicone in them, and silicone and automotive paint are mortal enemies. You don't want to mess with silicone on your vehicle. 
anybody that wants to do any type of protective coatings down the road or might want to address any rust with some chemicals, uh, they're going to be up against that silicone. That's something to keep in mind if you're going to go that route. Make sure you do your options. It's easy to do things for ourselves and do what's easiest for us, but y you know, you may want to consider your, your children or your grandchildren in, in that decision if they ever want to restore the vehicle, making it back to original, anything like that. Always keep that in mind.